Hello, my name is Guy and you're watching How to Be a Great GM. Today we're talking about pinning maps and how pinning can help you be far more creative when it comes to using your own maps than you ever thought possible. Right, so we're talking pinning maps, inspiring great moments within your map using pins. Now, there's lots of software out there that will allow you to import one of your maps that you've made, a digital map from somewhere, and then place pins upon it. Traditionally, you would also be able to draw your map out and write little annotations about the space, make little notes of yourselves. I remember back in the day, I would draw out a little map and I'd put a little number in the room and then I'd have a key that I would reference with the little number somewhere else and my players would go through the dungeon and I'd forget to look at the key and forget what was happening inside that room. So I remember that that was how we used to do it. There are far better ways of doing it these days and as sponsors of today's show, World Anvil, worldanvil.com is going to allow us to pin our maps in such a way that we can share our pre-pinned maps with our players and they won't be able to see those pins, only we will, which is an incredibly powerful tool. It means we don't have to have multiple versions of the same thing going on. We can share these maps and things with our players and they won't know what's going on. So before we jump into the pinning of things, we need to understand just what is it that pinning is going to allow us to be able to do? So when we look at pinning, I call it inspiry formation as an in information that inspires. Inspiry formation? No, never mind. All right, silly name. It's inspired you or should inspire you with information. So inspire yourself with your pins. Now, we're going to talk about that in a little bit as to what does that mean, but when it comes to inspiring yourself, a pin can be as simple as a descriptor, dangerous room, empty room. Does that inspire you? Really? Your pins should contain some information that's going to make your story better and keep you in the mood. A lot of people say, oh, I lose focus when I'm GMing or I do this or I well, sure. How do you keep yourself in your game? Well, inspiring yourself is one way of doing it. The mundane isn't mundane. Pin a mundane location because in pinning it, you've recognized it. Oftentimes, we'll draw a room and we'll go, OK, that's the kitchen. And we'll move on. I know that this is what happens because I do it myself. Come back to that mundane and you can make it much more interesting. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a little bit too. And then function should be insightful. Look at the space. This is a giant Star Destroyer aircraft hangar. It's huge. That's its function. But what does its function inspire within us? When we look at this space, is it, is it giving us insight into who built it? In which case, how do we do that insight? How do we do that? And, and what are the details that we need to tell our players in order to convey that? A player can look at a map and not have a clue as to what the function is of the space they're in. It's up to us to describe that and to tell that to the players. So when we look at everything on this particular page, we have the inspiration from the mundane and from its function. And there's another person who's going to give us inspiration and make our maps that much better. And that person is over there. Hello. <laughs> right. We're talking about the implications of form and function function giving us insight. So it's all about how... Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! It's all about if we happen to have, say for example, a mage of exceptional talent and ability, but the mage may have a certain vanity about them. And we are pinning our maps and we come to Let's say, for example, the bedroom. And in this particular bedroom, there that's where we expect the mage to have stayed. Now, if it is a regular bedroom, so be it. There's no inspiration from there. But if we know that our mage is a little bit of a dandy, likes the finer things in life, perfumes, hair gels and creams and that sort of thing, 
we can now add that in. But it's not just about adding it in to create nuance and flavor. The pieces break in, they find this room, you describe it filled with little filigrees and fluffies and all the wonderful things that go with being a medieval kind of dandy, I suppose you might say. It gives character to the NPC, but also but also it gives the PCs an opportunity to then add it to their role-playing when they're engaging with that mage. Let them understand that. So a bedroom is no longer a bedroom. If you think about the individual who owns it, what would be in there that gives the personality of this individual? It's not just a bedroom. It's not just a dungeon kitchen. Explain in your head who that person is that inhabits that space and give it personality to describe that individual, even if the PCs don't encounter them. Why? Because it makes it feel as if it's real. It is an interesting approach to take when you are doing your maps. This is almost another level at which you'll find yourself. You've now drawn the map, you've used whatever tools you needed to use, and now you're taking it to the next level. So what else can we do? Return to these pins. You have a map, you put a pin down and you go, oh, I don't actually have an answer for that. I can't uh, brain mush. Yes, fine. Drop the pin and move on. Come back later. Don't stress about it. This is supposed to be a fun endeavor, not an exercise in homework. Drop Easter eggs. Oh, it's a storage room. Okay, well, there's nothing interesting in here, so say the players. Well, if you put a pin which says that there's an old banner which is rolled up in the corner and the banner is of a flag of one of the character's ancestors, well, that's brilliant. It has nothing to do with the adventure. It has nothing to do with the map. But the pin inspired you to place it. So whenever you put down a pin, try and think of something that could perhaps just be an Easter egg. It could be nothing. Maybe it's a stuffed bunny, which, again, means nothing until in five years time they find a ghost who's seeking a stuffed bunny. Put things in that are going to allow you to seed adventures in the future. Why not? You're doing the work anyway. Rather make sure that it gives you something to work with than not. Then uh, surprises. Surprises, help, and trickery. Obviously, we want some traps, we want some things along those lines, but generally that's done at the design of the dungeon phase. We're now pinning. So when we talk about trickery and we talk about surprises and we talk about help, it's a case of saying, okay, well, in this room I put this chest, the room has got this big thing on it, I know what's in the chest, Maybe I need to remind my players that there is a trap here. How do I remind myself that in the corridor is text on the wall? We pen it. You can't draw that text on the wall. And yes, you could write number five, corridor with text on it. Yes, you can do that. I just find this is a much, much easier, faster and a more efficient way of doing it. But there's more to it than just that. Nothing is immutable. Everything should change. Never ever think that because you have pinned it and you have labeled it and you have described it, that that is what should stay there. We can quite easily chop and change because who knows what was planned on being there? Only you. Nobody else. So if you have a chest and then inside this chest you have labeled that there is this giant death trap waiting to devour our poor, poor, poor heroes because they didn't check for traps beforehand, but the heroes have been bamboozled and bombarded and attacked left, right and center for the entire duration of this adventure. And they get to the chest and all they need in order to carry on is just a map or a healing potion or something that will restore their spirits for they are lost. Change the pin, for heaven's sakes. Just adjust it. No one will know except for you. And what have you done? You've made the gaming experience better rather than proving that you've designed a dungeon that will break even the strongest of character builds. That's not the goal. So don't think that because you've pinned it, it must now stay pinned. Unpin it. It's as easy as that. You're going to have to let me know whether you think this is going to work or not. And I know it's very rough at the moment. I'm still getting used to this entire process. But that's the idea that we're going for. So pinning maps is something of an, 
exercise in helping yourself rather than anything else. It's not, it does work, it does take some work depending again on what you're using. So I'm going to give you a demonstration now on World Anvil. I have a subscription to World Anvil and if you want one, use the code GREATGM and that will get you a significant percentage off of a subscription base. Why would you want a subscription? Well, it gives you access to some of the tools that I'm talking about in terms of your players are going to get one copy of the map that they can use and plot in and talk about, and you get the same copy of the map, but your pins are kept secret. So let's have a look at what I'm talking about here. I've got this map, this winter map that was made in Dungeon Fog, and you can watch that episode. Um, I'm not sure when it came out, either last week or next week, uh, on how we converted this map from a summer map into a winter map but we've got this map and I've got it open in World Anvil and so now I'm going to start pinning so with World Anvil I can just zoom in here and we've got this statue now everything on a map should be pinned and all I need to do is right click on it and that opens up a pin and I'm going to type in here statue um, of I don't know and in the description we're going to say uh, a helmeted warrior covered in snow um, the white of the snow blends in with the marble of the statue making it look as if the stone is melting. Throwing in some words. What do the players know about this? And only you can see this information. What do the players know about this? Only you can see this information. Um, at the base of the statue is an old riddle and solution. I'm going to come back to it. What type of marker are we going to use? Uh, I don't think they have statue marker. You can hot key through it. I'm going to put here, uh, let's see, what have we got? We've got asteroids, not an asteroid. This really is just the shape. So you can work out a code that you like to use if, if you so want to. You could work out a symbol. So is it a danger? I'm going to put a gray danger token. So we get this little skull and crossbones there. If I had an article which spoke about the riddle or the statue, I could link it here if I wanted to. I don't, so that's absolutely fine. I can go into the advanced options. This marker is private. This marker will link directly to its destination. If I if I really wanted to, I don't need to worry about that. So now I've created that marker. I can come back to it because when I click on it, it's the statue of. I can always come back, click on the edit button. It will open it up here. There the marker is, and there's all my information. So I can say it's the statue of uh, Brian the useless okay and again i can link it through to a whole bunch of different organizations etc etc again if if that was what was needed to be done now i can close this up i can come back here and if i refresh the page of course is what we need to do it will then update that marker hopefully and there i get to see a statue of brian the useless with its info the players won't be able to see some of that information as i so choose so we can continue now again even here this little fence this signpost we pin this signpost and it's just a signpost um signpost and it is 135 miles to um say Bor B byron mm ton and that's to the west and uh, 200 400 miles uh, to Jorad in the east um, and 34 miles to Narak in the south whatever select a marker i'm just going to go with circle because it's just some information and it's uh, relatively useless information so let's make it yellow there we are so now we've got this marker here now we can turn these on and off as we so need to if we find that they're getting in the way we could also if we wanted to layer them so that i have them in different layers so there's lots of functions but this signpost 
it doesn't do some of the things that I spoke about in this video. It doesn't give us an Easter egg. It doesn't give us some useful information. So I want to add some more to this. I want to give a little hint, an Easter egg, if you like. Scratched on the back, it says, W is death, E is life, and S is for a good time. What does that mean? I have no idea. I have no idea. It is a little Easter egg. Again, it has nothing to do with this map whatsoever. It's not going to help my players in any shape or form, supposedly, as they... Um, uh, let me just get rid of that get rid of that it's not going to help them it's just this it's this funny little thing that's that's there we can work out later what w w e s death life and good time uh -huh. maybe it's a clue maybe it's a map who knows and so we're going to continue throughout this map pinning away adding in details this is clearly a tavern of some kind there's some horses in there this is the mayor's town maybe i don't know there's a large bedroom so we're just going to pin it and just work our way through adding in all of these cool easter eggs and things until eventually we've got our populated map and with world anvil i've got up to 180 pins on one map it takes a bit of time to load over the internet of course but then again 180 pins worth of information and i'm going to show that to you now very quickly by closing this and going to my explorer and opening up my atlas and going to the nautical map and here what i have done because there are so many pins that i have added in is and there you go it's a big map it's a big map and there are my layers so i've got names these are some names i've got locations these are some locations that I've got regions. So the regions are the continental names. So the Wrecked Rough Archipelago or uh, Palra Sadi Island, the ocean or the sea, Jarak Sea, a dark and brooding sea filled with turmoil and rogue waves. So this is just the location names of the continents or the bigger areas. I can turn those off and turn on location names where I've color coded them. So I've got red for extremely dangerous, orange for slightly da or for moderately dangerous, yellow for slightly dangerous, green for safe, blue for underwater stuff. So Thel Halwa Bay, a deep a large deep bay ideal for big ships and fast sailing so again what inspires you when you're moving over these things here we have the spitzar jungle a peculiar carnivore lives here capable of projectile spitting a seductive a sedative bile at great strength i need to improve my glasses so again i've just dropped this stuff in it's just going to help me if my players ever sail to the anjatrel mountain range an ancient mountain uh, range of mountains full of crumbling caves and treacherous passes okay great let's add in some more detail then if we needed to so we now know that there's this little town parcela and parcela a free port and safe haven for all races but right next to parcela is this very dark jungle uh, the Coplin jungle, large and dangerous jungle full of large predators and lost ruins. And here is an actual ruin, the Unranti Wan's tomb. Unranta Wan was a great necromancer and terrible warlord. So again, pins are going to really help you, not just from keeping track of information, but from inspiring you and leading you on this beautiful i think anyway passage of discovery and inspiration and and really just hey you want to really improve your game you want to have fun whilst pinning your map whilst giving yourself information use the ideas in this video to really just have fun doing ultimately what it is that we have fun doing until next time we only make these videos because, well, we like to share the knowledge that we have and we don't know how to do that in a way that is entertaining, engaging and exciting without your feedback. Let us know, what do you think of this new approach, this this crazy idea of having all of this stuff going on? There's been enough videos out so far that you might have formed an opinion already. Please let us know. Is it insightful? Is it different? Does it make it 
more interesting to have these kinds of things than just me talking away with bullet points. I, I hope it does, because I can't think of another way to make it interesting and exciting and different as well. I mean, we, we're here to learn, but we're also here to have fun and to experience and to explore. And our, our hobby is about fun, so it should be fun to talk about it. Don't you think? 